welcome, Melissa. Excellent, thank you. So, Lego yes. sounds like such a fun company to work for. Can you tell me what is happening at Lego in the people analytics department? Yes, I am super excited to, to be part of the Lego group. And within the, the insights team that I look after, we have uh, two broad remits. One is we're responsible for all internal and external reporting, all analytics, all forecasting. And the other area of my remit is we're responsible for our HR technology footprint as the business owner. And we're super excited because we are massively modernizing both of those worlds over the next you know, three years or so. It's very much a journey for us. All right. I think uh, specifically around the people analytics space, we are implementing a new technology to help us step change our, our offering and to be able to go from a more traditional BI focused approach where you have rows and rows of data and spreadsheets that then need to be scrubbed and put into charts and graphs that can be easily consumed. We're launching a new innovative solution that depends on a dashboard tool. Okay. So it'll be very user intuitive. We can push it out to all of our people, partners and business leaders and enable them to get a really user friendly access to, to their basic HR data, which is absolutely brilliant. We're also going through a massive effort around people planning to better understand our permanent headcount and our external workforce and to make sure we're optimizing and structuring that. And for me, I find that really interesting because that is a, a new space. People talk about understanding the shape of your workforce between permanent contingent workers and consultants, but very few people can actually talk about what should the shape look like and how should it evolve over time. And I'm, that, that's a piece of work I'm really excited about. And the other area that is even more exciting for me and my team is around the HR technology front. Yeah. We are currently transitioning off of a very heavy on-premise solution into a new cloud-based ecosystem. And we're just in the starting phases of that journey. So if you ask me again next year, hopefully we'll be toward the end and I can tell you how it went. Definitely, I would love to. Um, when we, I'd like to ask you something already about this moving into the HR technology uh, a bit more. So you're saying you're in the starting phase. Yes. Well, how do you go about choosing technology? What is the Excellent process question. like? Oh, it was a lot of fun and it never <laughs> as easy as you think it's going to be. I think for us, it was defining guiding principles. And these guiding principles for us will evolve around our journey as we modernize, but specifically around vendor selection. We, we sat down with our colleagues in HR and IT and our shared service and had to think about what type of, of cloud ecosystem do we want? And we said, you know what? We want a cloud ecosystem that for the most part, the core HCM can do most of the processes. So we want it breadth of functionality. That said, we also wanted the flexibility to have an open architecture. So if we needed to add on you know, a solution specifically, and I'm making it up around candidate relationship management, for example, we could easily do that. And for us, that guiding principle of going for more for a best of suite approach helped guide us. We also had a guiding principle that the solution we, we picked up for the core HCM must be complying in all jurisdictions we operate globally. And that's a tough nut because not a lot can do that. So, so those were kind of our, our two guiding principles that helped us select a short list. And then from there, we looked at kind of our secondary guiding principles around these concepts of simplicity and usability. This new digital ecosystem we're building is, is meant to focus around four main pillars around uh, agility. So for us, that means being able to quickly pivot and change our business processes to meet change in business demand, yeah. uh, meet needs of new markets we might enter into. Around productivity, uh, which we define is being able to prioritize things well and work as efficiently as possible. Around experience, which as you know, everyone wants a positive experience, but what does that mean from a candidate perspective, a manager perspective, an employee working in our factory perspective, yes. what is a good experience and how can we consciously craft that? Yeah. And because I think today, a lot of our experiences we've inherited because of the technology that we have. And now we want to have a great opportunity to, to craft those as best as we can. And then the fourth one is around influence. And for us, this is more than um, just data and analytics. It's kind of the next step. So we have a data model in place. That's great. We can get some analytics out of it. That's great. So what? Influence for us answers that question. So what do you do with that information? And how do you apply that information and consume it in such a way that you can influence strategic business decisions? So we're looking at all of the decisions we make through those four lenses. Sounds like, a, that sounds like a big project. <laughs> it, it is. It, it's a lot of fun. And I'm so thankful um, for, for the team we have together that is working so hard and bringing so many different perspectives into it. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is a lot, lot going on, both in terms of the analytics side and in terms of the technology side. Yes. As well as the process side, we've also have decided to retire a lot of our processes and try to come up with ones that are as simple as possible. 
And we've done a lot already, to be fair, in terms of stripping down a lot of the bureaucracy and make sure our processes can be simple, simple, simple to follow. And we're going to continue that through. So for us, it, it, it's not just a tech swap. It's actually you know, modernizing our, our HR offering as a whole to the business, which is super exciting. Yeah, and so since you've, you've started already this process now, do you maybe have some you know, tips that you can share with other HR departments or professionals that are going to do this same modernization process? Do you have a few things, things that you learned maybe along the way? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that really helped us so far in our journey is getting all the different perspectives in. So we have, have a great cross-functional team of colleagues, you know, from, from HR, our IT function, our shared service, who together participate in all of the meetings around, you know, vendor selection and planning the way forward. And a lot of times, you, you know, in the old days, you might have, well, IT will come to the integration meetings, but maybe they won't sit in on the business process meetings. But the perspectives they bring are incredibly valuable and vice versa. So, so bringing together kind of a cross-functional SWAT team has been super, super helpful and, and really also helping us in, engage with the, the broader business. I think having a clear idea of where you want to go and be able to link that to your strategic business objectives is super important because everyone talks about modernizing. We want the cool stuff. To what end and why do you want it? So what? You have to prove your business case and you have to show how it links to strategic objectives. And then you just have to get on with it and not be afraid or scared to make decisions and embrace you know, agile working. You know, Learn as quickly as you can, fail fast, recover, and keep going. So I think my advice would be, you know, get the best minds in the room from across the organization and have fun. It'll be a lot of hard work, but you'll get there in the end. Yeah. Fantastic. And I have one last question, but Go that's just it. simple curiosity okay. from my end. Do you now get an unlimited amount of Lego? Oh, I wish. But there's always <laughs> Lego in the office to play with. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much, Melissa. Excellent. Thank you, Neely.